Welcome to Bar Chart Series of Webinars designed to educate you about a variety of market concepts, inform you on the features and tools the Bar Chart provides related to these concepts, and finally to give you some traders insight on how to help you make a more informed investment decision. Today's subject, volume, the most important technical indicator. So, Having spent, oh, 20 plus years working on the trading floor of the NYMEX, one comes very in tune to certain sensory inputs. And one of them was the noise level that was coming from the pits. Now, to an outsider or a first time visitor, um, the noise is quite surprising. But to a seasoned trader, uh, you can distinguish between an active day and, as the saying goes, a quiet day. And that would be by the level of volume coming from the pits. Now, the louder it got meant that more traders were competing for bids and offers. And the more active trading became, it increased the significance of the price movement. And the more the price movement trended, the more the volume became. Now, today's modern traders don't have the advantage of hearing the noise that was coming from the former pits, but they do have volume, the record of transactions between buyers and sellers. And this silent indicator can be as deafening as the days in the pits when it comes to awareness of price and price movement. Hello, everyone. My name is John Rowland. And yeah, as I moved from being a floor trader to becoming an online trader, I had to discover a new uh, skill set. And one of these skills was learning the importance of trading volume, as I had learned the importance of the noise from the floor volume. So what I was going to do for you guys today is I'm going to share with you, you know, how volume validates price. Uh, the four phases of price volume analysis, and then the significance of peak volume and low volume. But before we get to that, please welcome my partner and our moderator, Bar Charts Project Director, Gene Baker. Hello, Gene. Well, hi, John. How are you? I am doing fine. And yourself? I'm great. Hey, so I hear you have... Uh... Uh, you go by the oil king cousin now, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, we did this. I did a guest spot, and uh, they were asking me how I wanted to be known. And I guess, well, I started in the oil business, so we kind of right. made fun about that. So, yeah, the oil king. So you are the oil king cousin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All sure. right. So let me ask you a question. So have you ever been to a cocktail party or a house party, and you've – know by the instant you walked in the party if the party is happening or it's exciting right of course yeah how how would you I only go that? I only go to the exciting parties come <laughs> on John and I can I can tell that I know where you're going with this by by how loud it is in the room right right the the volume of the conversation right you know people so trading is very similar to that what we're going to look at is volume this excitement to the market as a way to help validate our price. Okay, so you ready to get started, Gene? Let's get going. All right, let's do it. All right, so to remember, today's session is for educational purposes only, and the decisions to buy, sell, hold, or trade securities, commodities, or other investments involves risk and best are made on the advice of a qualified financial professional. And under so, no circumstance shall we be liable for any loss or damage you or anyone incurs as a result of any trading investment investment activity that you or anyone engages in based on information or material that you receive through bar chart and or our services. Okay, so as we start our journey today, uh, I want you to keep in mind four key components when it comes to volume and how volume relates to price and price action. So the first is 
high volume confirms our trends. In other words, the strength of our trends will be confirmed by rising volume. Second is low volume actually contradicts the trend. Lack of volume tells us that the market isn't excited or there's no emotion about price or price has found an equilibrium. Volumes decline in consolidation patterns. As price tends to trade sideways, there's a lack of conviction. And price is waiting for that fuel to push it through an area of support or resistance. And that fuel is volume. So an increase in volume is a sign of the beginning of a new price trend. So you can see here that there is this kind of this cycle or a symbolic um, relationship between volume and uh, price. Price moves because of volume and price movement attracts volume. So they kind of are interactive. So what are the four phases of price volume analysis? So again, as we look at these, I want you to think about or concentrate on when you start looking at your charts, these different four phases. But more importantly, what I want you to think about is what are the results and the probabilities that these phases bring about? So the first phase is strong demand. And in strong demand, price trend is up and volume is rising. In other words, it's confirming an uptrend. So let me go to a chart here and I'm gonna pop this out so we can see this. Now, before we get into depth into our chart analysis, when we look at volume, I do need to speak about a couple things, and I'm gonna do this throughout the process of today. So the first thing is that on any chart that we have, we can add volume to it, and that's easily done through the studies uh, button up here, and I can just type in uh, volume. And so I could just click on volume, and it would show me that volume uh, for that particular chart. But volume has a lot of variance to it. In other words, you know, it fluctuates from day to day or from hour to hour. So one of the things we might want to think about is I want to have a smooth baseline. In other words, a moving average of volume. So one of the things that we can do is we can do a volume moving average. And we can add that to a chart. And this is going to kind of give us a baseline. We're going to, we'll be able to tell when volume is excited above that baseline or when volume is dull, when it's below that baseline. And that's what we see here. Now, the other thing that we can do is instead of having to add this to our chart every time, we can create a template. And one of the benefits of becoming a subscribed member of Bar Chart is allowing you to create certain templates. And that's exactly what I've done here, is I have a template that has volume and that average volume. And that's what we're seeing uh, here, okay? So, phase one, strong demand, uptrend, rising volume. Here we can see our uptrend, and this is in natural gas, it's been in the market, it's been in the news as of re recent, and you can see where our trend started to begin, we start seeing this kind of staircase rise in volume. A rise in volume is confirming this uptrend. Now, later in our discussion, we're going to talk about peak volumes or spike volumes and what they represent. Just be patient with me. We're going to get to that. Um, but we can see here in this green candle and this red candle, we did get a peak volume 
And that peak volume at that time was twice the daily average volume. So that would be something significant. And when we come back to this chart, we're gonna look at this candle right here, this green candle. And now we're seeing volume is even rising even more. So this could be something very, very significant. We will look at that um, a little bit later. Okay. So phase two, well, this is weak demand and price tends to trend up but price is, excuse me, volume is starting to fall or volume is starting to wane. And this is a sign of our uptrend is weakening. And so this is a chart of gold. And I want you to concentrate here on the price action that's inside of this pink box. And we can see that price is rising, it's trending higher. But if we look at our volume, our volume is decreasing or it's below that baseline. You know, we have this peak volume where the price bottomed and then from that point on, what did we see? Low volume. So we have an uptrend, but we don't have strength to this uptrend. We don't have conviction to this uptrend. And so this is a weak trend. Now I want you to look at something here, and this is kind of what we want to start doing when we look at volume, is price was allowed to rally on light volume. There wasn't a lot of resistance. Well, why wasn't there a lot of resistance? Because if we look to the left of this rally, we don't really see any real structure. Plus, the structure we do see is related to very low volume, no conviction, right? Nobody was really cares about price in this range. But notice that price did rally, and where did it stop? Again, if I look to the left, and I look at volume as an indicator of price, conviction, notice we see a large amount of volume being generated in this region. Now for my candlestick traders, my support and resistance traders, this is kind of an area of resistance. For supply and demand traders who understand what supply and demand represents, Here's a drop base drop, a very strong area of resistance. So price was allowed to rally up until it found a price of conviction. How do we know it's a price of conviction? By the volume that was created during the time of that price action. So volume can also tell us the strength of a trend, but it also helps, again, validate our price. Phase three, strong supply. Now, this is where our price trend is down, downtrend, and our rising volume. Again, our downtrend is now being confirmed. So let me go to the cues here. And again, give me a second here. I need to talk to you about a nuance about some of the charts that we have. So if I am looking at an equities market, not we just looked at two futures markets. All the data that we get on futures markets is on a time delay. That's how our charts work. But for equities markets, equity securities, uh, we do have real time trading. Now, if I have up here where it says real time, I have that box checked. 
what it's going to do is going to give me the data that's coming from the CBOE bats. It's going to be coming to me in real time. But the bats, the CBOE bats, only represents about a tenth of the whole market. So we're seeing real prices, but we're only seeing about a tenth of the volume of the whole market. Now watch what happens to my volume today if I go to real time. My volume drops. So if I'm going to do volume analysis, I either have to wait until the end of the day to when everything is official or I'm going to take it off of real time. Now notice I'm still getting real time data up here in terms of price action. I can still see that, but now I'm getting to see the, all the volume for that particular market. So that's a little bit of a nuance that you need to be aware of. All right, so again, we're in phase three. We're in a strong supply cycle and we're in a downtrend on rising volume. And again, here we can see that here's our downtrend. And here's our rising volume. Again, notice how we get that staircase of volume as we are transitioning on our price trend. Now, what did happen with price here? Well, price continued to fall, volume continued to rise, and then we get another peak volume. And again, this is where we see the end of our price movement. Now, it doesn't mean that it's the end of the trend. It just means that price is not going to move any farther from here. It needs to either gather strength and then maybe new volume to push it lower, or a lot of times we'll see is a reversal in price. Again, we'll talk about peak volume in a bit. But again, what it was, the, one of the things that we talked about in terms of validating price, that consolidation tends to find falling volume. And so if we look at this price action right here, this consolidation came on very light volume. Now, if we look at this in hindsight, in terms of the big picture, this area of consolidation of low volume was also where the market was attempting to make a new high. And we didn't get an enthusiasm and an emotion of new volume to make a new high. And that would have been a warning sign to us that something was about to happen. And in most case, whatever new volume came in would dictate the next trend. And that's exactly what we saw, a rise in volume on a downward price action in the beginning of a strong supply cycle. And then finally, phase four is weak supply. And so weak supply comes usually after a major downtrend. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of a different example, but a downtrend on falling volume is telling us that that downtrend is weakening. So phase four is weak supply, downtrend on falling volume, no conviction, right? Sometimes referred to as kind of a dull market. Now look at this price action. Again, I want you to concentrate on the price action that's inside of this pink box. This price action, right? This is a really nice trend. I mean, if you were looking at this, you know, this trend is in control. There's a lot of lower highs and lower lows, which is defines a downtrend. But notice that our volume is declining. So price is trending but there's no conviction behind this trend. And so that when price comes to retest this trend, then price is going to fail. In other words, there's no validation to it. Now, we need to talk about another nuance here, and th that is the color of my volume bars as it relates to my candles. 
Now, if we have an up day, in other words, the price of the market closes above the previous day's price, an up day, then the volume bars will be green. In other words, up volume. Market moved up, then we're going to categorize that volume as up volume. If the market price is lower than the previous day's close, then that would be determined as a down volume day. And so you would have a red candle. Now notice though, we have a red candle for our candle, but we have a green volume bar. So something's going on here. What is going on? Well, it's about how I look at candles or how I have set up my defaults for candles. So on candlesticks, we do have a choice of different types of candlesticks. The more common use of candlesticks is the open to close. What we want to see is what does that price action that is represented by that one candle? So if a candle opens up lower and closes higher, that would represent an up candle or a green candle. But in this case, price opened up higher and closed lower. Therefore, this is a red candle, a down candle. The price action for that particular day is showing me that there was selling pressure in that candle. But if I change my candlesticks to close to close, now my candles will be related from the previous day's candle. In other words, notice how my red candle now turns green because here is the close of the previous day. And even though the selling pressure we saw on the open to close candle, the price of this candle still closed above the previous day's candle. That's why it would be green instead of being red. But this is significant, isn't it, right? We have a selling pressure on an up volume day. It's kind of telling us that bears are trying to get back in control. Maybe we are starting to see a conviction. Now, the next day, what happened? Price fell. Right? We do see a red candle, and we do get a red volume bar. In other words, price did close lower. But our volume is a lot less than our previous day volume. Here, volume is contradictory predicting this price pressure, this selling pressure. If we really thought bears were in control, what would we want to see? We would want to see this volume be a spike volume or an increase in volume, certainly above the volume that we saw from the previous day. Now, the next day, what do we see? Well, we got an up candle on up volume, and not only up volume, but this volume was above the selling pressure of the previous two days. So this is a clear sign to us that not only have do we see an, an excitement of price action on volume, an increasement of volume, and that could be the sign of a new trend. And now notice what happened with price. Well, it did gap higher the previous, the next day, and this could be the beginning of a new trend. But I think what really what is, is being represented here I've right clicked on my chart and I've gone to events and I'm going to click earnings. And this is what this green candle here was on earnings day for IBM. And I believe earnings came out after the close. And so that happened was those were really good earnings. And then price action shot up, right? Shot up. And again, we got this big spike in volume as either shorts that were in the market got trapped or maybe this new conviction of buying uh, IBM. Now, what is interesting here is price, after we got this spike in volume, what did our volume do? It dropped dramatically, right? Again, an area of consolidation falling uh, volume. 
if we really believe this was the beginning of a new trend, what would we anticipate? We would anticipate our volume to continue to rise, right? So we're not really getting that in, um, conviction. What we're really are getting is kind of a knee-jerk reaction to earnings. But I also want to think about why did price stop right here? Why did it run up and then stop? Right? Why didn't price continue to go? Or why didn't price consolidate and then run up? Well, if we go over to the left, all the way over here to the left, and for my candlestick aficionados, maybe you could type in the comments, what do you think this candle is? Those of you who are not aware of different types of candles, this is a very strong reversal candle, reversal, reversal price candle. And this candle is called a gravestone. It's a kind of a doji, a battle of indecision, but with selling pressure. Now, let's look at this candle. One of the cool things we can do with volume is I'm doing a lot of analysis today at the daily level, but we can use volume at multiple time frames, higher time frames and lower time frames. So let's look at this gravestone candle and notice that we do see some significant volume. So there's something definitely going on here. And so not to trick you or confuse you, here on this gravestone candle, look up here in the left-hand corner, this gravestone candle occurred on January 5th. So I'm gonna drop down to a lower time frame. This is a monthly chart and an hourly time frame. And I'm gonna just kind of, give me a second here to adjust this a little bit. And there it is. And then I'm gonna make it a little wider so you can see it. Okay, one more time. There we go. Okay, so here we are, January 5th. And we're in an hourly chart. And again, what type of candlestick pattern do we see? Those of you who aren't familiar with candlestick patterns, well, this is called a tweezer top, and this is another reversal pattern. This is a reversal pattern that's happening at the hourly time frame. And notice that price did what? Fell away, fell away dramatically. It fell away on what? Volume. Who's in control? Sellers are now in control. And what I did was I just drew this dotted line right at the top of our tweezer top. And we go back to our chart, our monthly daily chart. And look at that. Price rallied to the last point where price was validated by volume. It literally was by a penny. It came right to that tweezer top by a penny. And then what did price do? It stops and now it's kind of basing. Now, if I believe this is the beginning of a new uptrend over the next day, I want to start seeing volume increase. But if I see volume falling as we're seeing today, we're in a, a consolidation pattern. And so whatever volume comes will dictate the next trend. And my guess is that we'll probably break this support level uh, right here and come back and fill this gap, maybe on uh, a higher volume event. Okay. So those are the four phases of price action as it relates to uh, volume. All right, so we talked about, we showed you a couple examples of uh, peak volume. So what is the significance of peak volume? So peak volume is the market's way of telling us that a price movement is about to happen. And often high volumes signal a potential reversal in the current trend or price movement, or it's that fuel that's going to spark the next trend, the next price movement from consolidation. In other words, and you know, spikes in volumes come in breakout patterns. 
So these extreme volume events are really announcing this battle of great conviction between buyers and sellers. This, you know, they've come together, right? They're excited, they're emotional, right? There's this big battle between them. So we can look at these events in two lights. The first is we can look at it as a single candle. In other words, a volume bar and candle. And if I see a peak volume that is only one candle or one volume bar, this kind of means that price has reached an extreme. And what is happening is that price control is being wrestled away from whoever was in control to the, the opposite party. In other words, bears to bulls or bulls to bears. That would be a single candle event. The second candle event or peak volume event would be more important for us, and this is towards our trends, is we want to look at a cluster of peak volumes. And then this is a clear sign to us that there's a coming price movement. Now, typically, that is a reversal signal, these clusters. So, again, when we talk about IBM here, this is a peak volume on one bar. And what did we say? That usually tells us that price is reached an extreme. We already discovered that. But also that the price action is being wrestled away from the bulls in this case, because this is a green candle, uh, to potentially the bears. If I go back to my natural gas, and I look at those peak volume, notice here, here is an extreme in price that came on that peak volume. But what do we see? We see a cluster right, several days of peak volume. In other words, way above our moving average. Here is that significant battle, this, this excitement between bulls and bears, and also that signal to us that there's a price reversal about to come. Now, what I said to you about is something is very, very significant about what's going on in natural gas in the last couple of days is notice that price falls, a change in price direction, a new potential new trend and price falls and then we get this green candle. And this candle, green candle came on another peak volume bar. Matter of fact, this volume bar was greater than the peak that we had seen before where price had reversed. So what do we say? Peak volume is the wrestle of control from, in this case, from bears to bulls, but also an increase in volume from previous volume is also telling us there's a new excitement or new money is coming in. So this is a very significant low now for natural gas. That price is now going to move higher. And surely we see that another peak volume now, notice this peak volume came on a very little teeny candle. A big battle went on here. Bulls and bears are really battling it out. And who won that battle? Well, it looks like volume is continuing to rise, and so is price. So it certainly looks like to me that we are now seeing the beginning of a new price trend. Now, if we see a reversal here in price, and we get a red candle or a red volume day, then that could be, again, another big battle going on here between bulls and bears. But it really looks like, in this case, this was a significant swing in price action for natural gas. 
Let's go back to the queues for a second. And again, you know, here's again, that's kind of that Russell control away, right? A peak volume, right? As price went from a downtrend to a kind of a sideways action, right? If this was a beginning of a new uptrend, we probably would have want to see a little bit of a higher cluster and, you know, volume kind of rising. But we don't really see that, right? Notice again, it's a single bar peak volume where we have a change in control of price movement, right? Okay. So Charles Dow, uh, the Dow theory, some of you might have heard of that, really believed that substantial increases in volume often preceded, let me say that again, Increases in volume preceded significant price movements, beginnings of trends, reversals of trends. And so these spike volumes are kind of the things that we want to look for to give us a signal of some kind of dramatic price movement. All right, so that's kind of peak volume. So the other thing we can talk about is the caveat of low volume. What does low volume really mean to us? So even though price can trend in a low volume environment, low volume is really kind of telling us a sign that there's no conviction and that there's not really new money going into that, uh, that trend. So remember, you know, typically our weak demand or supply phases, right, are weak trends. But what I want you to think about is in terms of trading opportunities, that when we're in these low volume environments and we see these trends, that when price comes back and retests this trend, in other words, we get a correction or a pullback or however you define it, that these levels inside of these trends are going to fail because there's no conviction behind them. There's no money behind them. And so weak phase trends are trends that are going to fail. So weak supply is usually a strong indication that price action is bottoming. Now, the example I gave you is the IBM. But I wanted to try to find something that was current to the current market. But typically what you'll see is after a long extended downtrend, you'll see volume is kind of just piddles out. You know, sellers don't really care anymore. They're not really enthusiastic. And then, you know, volume really kind of dries up, right? Sometimes you might have heard the, that the, the adage, you know, never sell a dull mar market, right? That's where this comes from, right? Low volume at a low end of price action at the bottom of a trend is really an indication that our market is gathering energy and is ready to start maybe a new uptrend. And weak demand, again, I showed you an example of that, um, is where our buying enthusiasm is waiting, right? It really is kind of no new money is coming into the market. And this is a sign of a weakening trend. So again, let me go back to those examples. So here's IBM, Whoop, not IMB. <laughs> so IBM was our weak supply, right? We had this downtrend over here, weak supply, no conviction. That was why price was allowed to jump so significantly, right? Until it found a price of conviction based on volume. But let's do a little bit different. I've showed you a couple of different charts. Let's go to Apple. And this is kind of really cool. I'm going to really hopefully bring this together for you folks. So here is Apple. And what I really kind of, again, I want you to kind of concentrate on what is going on inside of this pink box. So inside of this pink box, 
we see both a weak supply cycle and a weak demand cycle in terms of supply and demand zones. But let's look at this um, trend, right? And some of you might have remembered this a few, uh, you know, about a month ago. We had about 13 days in a row where we didn't even have a green, a red candle. We just said green candle, green candle, green candle. And, you know, the Jim Cramers of the world were saying, you know, we're going to make a new high and that's the bottom and this is whatever. But notice that volume, there's no conviction volume. We had kind of just normal volume on all these green candles, right? We didn't see a spike in volume. We didn't see that conviction. So this is a weak uptrend. And then when price comes back and tests any of these levels, what did it do? Well, it maybe held it for a moment, but then price broke down. Price, the trend failed because this is a weak trend, no conviction behind it. So this whole area, this whole pink area is really what we call an area distribution. What is happening here is shares are exchanging hands. And usually areas of dis distributions are where institutions are selling to uh, retail traders. Um, and what we are seeing in recent days is we are starting to see a uptick in volume. And we are seeing that in context of a falling market. And that could be a sign of a new downtrend. Now, I'm not going to really get too enthusiastic about <clears throat> what's going on with Apple right now because which many of you are aware, much aware of is that we have earnings next week, or excuse me, tomorrow. So I think what we need to do here is wait for a volume event and then again, an increase in volume, maybe even a spike in volume that's going to drive price out of this pink box in the, out of this area of distribution. And that could be the next trend. It could be a downtrend. It could be an uptrend. I don't know. I just know that probably the earnings will be a catalyst for um, an increase in volume. All right. So there's other ways we can look at volume, and there are other technical indicators out there that are based upon volume. So one of the ones that is, I would consider old school, that it's been around um, for a long time, is something called on balance volume or OBV. And this is kind of an old school indicator. And the concept is very simple here is that high volume in one direction or low volume in the opposite direction usually confirms the price trend or that light volume in a price direction or heavy volume in the opposite direction is a suggestion of a potential price reversal we kind of did that right we looked at that spike volume we looked at you know our uh, strong demand, weak demand, strong supply, weak supply. We kind of talked about it. But we can also look at OBV as a value, a trending value. And then we can look for price divergence, which some of you might be familiar with. So an uptrend in volume or an OBV is a confirmation of the price action that we're seeing. And a downtrend in OVP is a clear sign of liquidation. So let me add this to my chart. And again, let me give you a little bit more of a perspective here, big picture perspective. And here we can see our OVB is rising, right? Rising with our trend. And that is a clear sign of a strengthening trend. Now, the way it's calculated is, is they take, you know, an up day versus a down day, and then they add the volume to it, and it's complicated. And I'll show you how to, where you can find that information. What I just want to show you is 
Notice how many more green candles are here in this uptrend, right? Kind of big picture analysis. And then what we can do is we look for those divergences where we see a change in our OVV, but we don't see the change in our uh, stock price. So for instance, here we can see our OVV peaked right here, and that was the all-time high for the Qs. But what did our smoothing average do? It rolled over. It kind of got flat. And then we have what is called a failure swing. We didn't get price. We didn't get our OVV to get back above that smoothing average. This is a failed swing. This is what is called negative divergence. This is a sign that something is changing. Even though at the same time, you can see that our OVV is falling, at the same time, we were trying to make a new high. So there was a clear conviction here that something is changing and that now, without new volume, that our market is about to roll over. And now we can see our OVV is trending lower, a clear sign of liquidation. And again, if I just look at these candles, these volume bars, excuse me, I see a lot more red volume bars than I see green volume bars. In other words, here we see volume is kind of confirming this downtrend that we're seeing in terms of price action. All right. So there are other indicators we can use. One of the one of the ones that is volume related is something called the accumulation distribution. There's a, there's the Williams and there's the uh, Chaikin. Where is it? There it is, the Chaikin one. So the Williams one is based on uh, average true range. Some of you might be familiar with the average true range and we're going to kind of use this um, like we would use a MACD, um, um, moving average conversion divergence. And so let me add that. And again, you know, let me kind of just squeeze this up a little bit for you. What we're going to do is here's kind of our smooth average. And like an a MACD is when we get the line crosses over from above to below, that is a sell indication, right? And notice that as it crossed over, right? There it is, cross over, that would be a sell indication. When it crosses from below to above, that is a buy indication. Again, you can see what price did after that. Again, here's another buy indication right there. And then here was a sell indication. So I kind of like this one. It's a lot easier. It really kind of confirms my uh, market analysis. The um, Chaikin one is more like, um, like an RSI where we're going to look for extremes in terms of uh, price action. You know, notice it's very similar to our Williams, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for like oversold conditions, bottoming conditions as buy signals, right? Buy signals or, you know, these peaks where it's overbought as sell signals. Okay, again, we can use that negative divergence, right? Um, where price action is rising, but the Williams indicator, or in this case, the Chalkin one is falling. So again, it kind of more like an RSI. So if you're interested in um, uh, technical indicators or some of the different ones. So under our tools section, under our resources, we have something called the technical indicator library. And in here, you can find all the different technical indicators that are available on our website. 
and you know there's some you can click on them and, and see the written description so the other one that i want to show you is called the vwap or the volume weighted average price and this is really for my day traders and you can see that it's really used for interday charts it's kind of really a way to look at uh, the internal trend for that particular day or that momentum for that particular day. And again, as long as price is above our uh, VWAP, it's kind of telling us that our trend is up for that day or if price is below, then our trend is down for that day. And again, this is really for my day traders out there. So let's go back to natural gas. And then let me go to the chart and I'm going to pop it out. And again, this chart is a six month daily chart, but again, a day trader, we're probably going to be looking at lower time frame. So let's change this to a monthly chart. And now a monthly chart is a 60 minute chart. And Let me kind of make that a little bit bigger for you. So I'm going to add my VWAP. There it is. And I'm going to add it to my main screen. I want to kind of lay it over top of my chart action. Now, there is something down here I want to show you is we can also look at standard deviations of uh, VWAP. And again, this is, would be kind of using it as a um, an oscillator or a, a bounded oscillator. So you can see, look for opportunities when the market is overbought or under oversold. In other words, it prices deviated away, deviated away from via. But I, I want to just kind of show you how I use it. So I'm going to add that. And again, let me kind of make this nice and big for you. So what we see here is these humps in volumes are really kind of just showing us the volume the, during the more active times, the regular trading hours of our markets for natural gas. It's probably about eight o'clock in the morning, um, Eastern time to about, oh, about, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon. So that's what these humps are showing us. So what, does the VWAP kind of tell me uh, so in on this particular day right I'm seeing you know vo price is staying above the VWAP which is telling me that for this particular day the momentum or the trend of that market is an uptrend so I would be more inclined to look for buying opportunities or looking to find demand zones or looking to find those candlestick formations that are in my uptrend that I want to enter into. Um, let's go back, you know, let's look at this day. Again, you know, price is staying below my VWAP, right? Again, internally for that, today's momentum is trending lower. So as long as it trends lower, um, you know, I would only be looking for um, shorting opportunities. But let's look at this day on this date and what do we see well price got above and then it got below and then it got above so if i get one day if i get one candle that closes above and then i get another candle that closes below i get two different singles what this is really telling me is that there's no momentum or there's no trend for this particular day and so i wouldn't trade this particular market i would look for an opportunity in another market so it's kind of a really nice little tool to help you to identify internal trends on a daily basis but also help you to kind of decide that you know by you know seven eight o'clock in the morning i've already decided that hey you know what i'm not trading natural gas today because it's been fluctuating back and forth um and I'll look for another opportunity, right? So here's a good example. Here's, you know, we caught the trend, right? Let's say we caught this trend. We were, you know, we're catching this momentum, but now price has broken back below it. So that would have been a signal for us to exit our trade and walk away and then say, hey, you know, it's it's over for today and maybe we'll look for an opportunity tomorrow, okay? So that's kind of just what that um, indicator is 
uh, it's really, really uh, better indicated for those who are uh, day trading. All right, so I'm getting to the top of the hour. I do want to try to answer some of the questions, but I also want to give you guys some uh, takeaways. So, Gene, let me kind of read some of these questions if you want to address any ones that are more um, common questions, I guess. Well, I'll give you a moment to read through the questions. You have a lot of questions coming in here, and I want to just say off the top of the bat that if John does not get to answer your question today, please, please, please email support at barchart.com. We've got a wonderful crew there that are happy to answer any questions that you have. A uh, lot of questions coming in here, John, and I think that you've opened up your eye or opened up everybody's eyes to the significance of these volume bars that we see all over the place. Uh, bar chart also has a number of uh, pages that deal with volume that John didn't even get to touch on today because he's been giving you all this information about how to read the charts and the volume on the charts. So um, if you are not a, a bar chart member, I really, really suggest that you just sign up for a free account if nothing else. That way, when you go and you look at your own charts, you can draw trend lines on them as John has has shown you how he's doing on, on the charts that he has up today. You can play around with your own volume type of indicators and you know get more accustomed to reading the chart signals that John's taught you today. Okay, thanks, Gene. Okay, so Chris asks, what period would you use for an average volume line? So, Chris, I think it really comes down to the trader. Uh, if you are an investment trader, long term, you know, you're going to probably look at you know, monthly, weekly, daily as your multiple time frame analysis. So, you know, 200 days, 50 days, you know, much longer period. If I'm a swing trader, which is kind of what I am now in my older age, you know, I look at a 20 period, you know, again, at a daily level, it's a 20 period and represents about a month's worth of average volume. But if I'm a day trader, you know, I'm looking at, you know, you know, I want to smooth vo volume out in those variances. So maybe I might use a much smaller um, volume line. So for instance, you know, again, every trader is different. But let's say you're using five minutes as your lowest time frame. Well, it, you know, maybe you're using, you know, a half an hour or an hour as your trend time frame. So how many five minute periods are in 30 minutes? Well, there's six, right? So you could use maybe a six. How many, uh, if I use six on the 30 minute time frame, well, that's what, about three hours. And for day traders, you know, a seasoned day trader is gonna tell you that most of the price action that you're going to see, especially in futures markets, occurs in the first three hours of the day, so maybe six, I don't know. I mean, it, it depends on the trader. Um, so I see a question about a different color volume bar uh, where you know price was changed. I think we answered that. Um, uh, ben, excuse me, Dan asks, is volume a better indicator on larger time frame as it compares to lower time frames? Yeah, I think, you know, again, I always believe that the higher the time frame, the more significant. It is in terms of trend analysis, but again, I showed you how you can fractalize it. You can go down to a lower time frame and really zone, zoom in volume and look for, you know, use our Western uh, technical analysis um, with that more uh, Eastern philosophy of candlesticks, looking for the patterns and then looking for the volumes to confirm the uh, candlestick pattern that we saw at lower time frames. Um, Scott asked about 20 versus 50. I guess I guess he's asking again, you know, again, Scott, I think it's really just about the trader. Yeah, 50-day volume, moving average volume might be a good period for somebody who's more of a swing trader or a longer-term investor. 50 is kind of really the industry standard for, let's say, institutional traders or looking for longer periods of time. Um, So again, kind of answered both of your questions there, Scott. Uh, 
Uh, so Jack Black asks, uh, can volume indicate an oversold and overbought situations? I think I kind of showed you that in terms of, you know, single candle spike volumes versus cluster volumes. But, um, you know, really overbought and oversold signals or indicators are really kind of about momentum, I guess. Um, and yes, are they two different technical analysis? Yeah. Do they coincide or timing wise do they line up typically they do so but re again remember what dow said was that typically volume spikes preceded all right preceded right and that could be you know we, we could still get an overbought or oversold situation after that before a price reverses okay all right um so joseph asks can the vwap be used for daily and weekly charts yeah i can but again that's really for more of an institutional trader out of the daily basis what they're looking at is you know they have large orders so they want to try to get off and if they try to jump into the market all at once on a large order they're going to disrupt the market so what they'll do is they'll look at the vwap and when price deviates from it for instance let's say it falls below the vwap then that is kind of a signal to them that it's a little bit better timing for them to be a buyer or if price gets above the VWAP, it's a better timing for them to be a seller. So it's a way for them to piecemeal in large orders. Um, so um, for us, for retail traders, mm, yeah, maybe a little bit, you know, again, maybe you could use that standard deviation to look for, you know, that oscillation at the daily level to help find oversold or overbought situations. But it's really more for an institutional trader. Okay. You know, so John, I answer if, yeah, what, go ahead. John, John, one more question that keeps on popping up here. And I'm, I don't know if you covered this at all, uh, but when you're looking at volume and you have a blue volume bar. Yeah, so a blue volume bar is, let's see if we can find one for Gene. Let's see if I find you one, Gene. How about that? I know you. I know I saw one of your charts earlier that have right yeah, there. Yeah, there it is. Volume, right, there. right? So a blue volume bar just tells us that on that particular candle or that volume bar is that price is unchanged. In other words, it didn't go up, so it wasn't a green bar, and it didn't go down, so it's not a red bar. So it just right. means unchanged. So if you look at the very top, uh, the main chart at your mouse over in the upper left corner of the chart you'll see the changes at zero so blue blue volume bar means the price is unchanged for the day awesome. okay i just want to make sure that yeah because that question keeps on popping up here yeah that's that's definitely one of those ones that our support team gets a lot too right exactly right okay all right so what are some takeaways okay Price is simply the result of volume. It's a very simple concept, but it has a wide array of interpretations. And I've shown you just a few of those interpretations today. Volume tells us the truth behind price. It validates it. Rising volume is that confirmation that participants are getting excited, they're emotional, and this validates price. Strengthening trend, but also for my supply and demand zone traders out there, zones that are in the strong cycles where we see rising volume, those zones have greater probability and are more likely to hold when they get tested, when that trend is tested. So let's concentrate only on zones that are in those strong volume cycles. Volume is that fuel that moves price. Falling volume tells us that participants are not interested in price. They're not concerned. They're not emotional. There's no conviction. They're not putting money to work which casts a doubt on price. And so in weak supplies, weak uh, volume cycles, those trends tend to fail and those zones don't work. No conviction, no quarter. Complacency is a 
trend killer. And then finally, spikes in volumes are a warning sign that price is about to move dramatically. We looked at that. Could be a reversal in our trend. We looked at a lot of examples of that. But also for breakout traders, you know, an increase in volume as price is breaking out of our range. That is a really good indication. But typically, these spikes are peaks of emotion. They are alerting us that there's this major battle between our buyers and sellers and that that battle is for price control. And that typically is a reversal signal. And so one of the oldest adages I've learned on the floor was they don't ring bells at tops and bottoms, but they do bring volume. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, today's session. I really believe that it's one of the most underlooked technical indicators by traders, but I think it's one of the most powerful ones. And, you know, go back and look at some of your trades and see the ones that worked and see the ones that didn't work in your logbook and look at what volume was doing at that time. You know, you can actually kind of start, if you start looking at volume bars and volume moving averages, you, know, you, could, you don't even need a price chart. You can kind of look at that and see what's going on and, and make some assumptions of what price is doing based on those volume bars. Okay. So as always, I want to remind you that what Gene had said about learning about uh, the different tools or what I showed you about creating templates, you know, you need to be a subscribed member to do that. Um, we do offer a bar chart um, free trial, 30-day trial. And Jean, do you want to talk about this? Right. As you see, we have nothing scheduled right now. We don't have a webinar uh, scheduled for next week. We're going to take a week off and kind of look at everything that we've got on board topics that we want to cover and we'll be back uh, shortly with a, a, a new announcement here on this page. But if you want to be notified as soon as we do pick a topic for our next webinar, John's showing you right at the top there, it says bar chart webinar notification in yellow. If you just put in your email address there, we will send you an email as soon as we do open up registration for a new session. Uh, you'll be the first to know. We also have a YouTube page, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Today's session is going to be found on that archived webinars tab. John, go ahead and click on click on archived webinars. So today's session, it's right there. If you go ahead and click on that understanding volume, we don't have the session out there yet, but you can download today's slides in PDF format right over there at the top there's a link to download the slides. So uh, look a little bit later on today, either here or on our YouTube channel. If you like what John presented today, and he gave you a lot of really good information, uh, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up on YouTube. We appreciate that. Thanks, Gene. I, I appreciate you, and I appreciate what you do for us and everything you do for Bar Chart. And another great session today. I again, I fo hope folks enjoyed it. Um, I want to tell everybody out there, you know, be safe out there, uh, the best of health, and the good of all trading.